Good morning, everybody. It is a wet morning here in my garden. We got some more rain last night, which we always appreciate um, as long as it's not, as long as it doesn't come all in one day, which often happens here in Oklahoma. I promised you guys a while ago that I would take each space kind of on a room by room basis and deconstruct it for you. So let me start out with this, what I think of as a room behind the wood pile and explain some of what I'm gonna be working on in this area, how this space came to be and how it will kind of change over time. This little fireplace here is based on actually a design that I saw in a state park. It was just a, just a small stone fireplace that had a rebar grate on top and you can see most of the rebar has kind of been destroyed but it's it, this has been here for forever I had it built um, in the summertime it gets used more as a plant stand but in the fall and in the cooler months we light small fires um, we can roast weenies when my kids were little before Halloween we would um, have uh, set up a little fire and the kids would roast hot dogs and things and, and then sometimes we'll do some mores. It's mostly just for ambiance. And then I have had this same faux bois container that I got at a charming little antique store here in Oklahoma City, just down the street within walking distance from me called Mockingbird Manor. And it's a faux bois long planter that has had these same geraniums in it for years. They go into the greenhouse and um, and then it comes back out and for some reason I just love the way it looks against this dark wood these are red geraniums I don't have really any other red in my garden but as I told you I find them sentimental and I love the way the red looks against th the wood pile and we do have a wood burning fireplace inside my house um, but I always like to leave a little bit of wood here because I like the way it kind of circumscribes this area and especially the area behind it which is what I'm going to show you today. So I do have some tidying up to do. Um, over here are two of the volunteer plants. I've showed you these before that I just dug up from my garden. These are Blue Point Junipers and there's just a little scree on top. This one's getting quite tall. I need to move them into some more sun. Because I'm sun challenged around here, um, I kind of rotate my plants in and out. So this area over here, for a reason I shall reveal, which probably makes absolutely no sense to you guys, but in my mind, I call it the fish pond, and I'll show you why in just a moment. But this redbud tree is a volunteer, sounds like it's gonna rain again, that came off of the grandmama redbud tree that was here when we bought the house. It was the only thing growing in the backyard. And this was a volunteer and I just let it grow in, in place and then I shaped it into this form over time. I told you I love big hanging baskets. And these angel wing begonias have been in here for a couple years now, along with some parsley and some gold money wart, which I really think is, it's a wonderful ground cover that can be used as a spiller in flower arrangements. And I love the way it repeats the color of the yellow center of the begonias. These came out of the greenhouse kind of scrawny, but once they got some sun and some food and a little TLC, they have really filled out beautifully. This was a core basket liner that I put in this hanging basket and those dastardly squirrels and birds, they just keep picking away at it until it begins to basically decompose. So this actually has a plastic 
liner in it, just some plastic that I put in there. So in the areas that where they stripped away the coir, I just put pieces of bark because you guys know I kind of have a bark fetish and I like the way it looked. Ideally, I wish I, I, th there was a, a longer lasting solution to this. Um, I'm actually working on some ideas in my head. I, I don't like plastic, so that's not an option for me. So there's the hanging basket. And it repeats and draws your eye to the other hanging basket in the distance that is lurking behind this other redbud tree. You can see it there. So I like to repeat that kind of coral color. It is one of um, the few batches of color really in my late summer garden once it starts getting hot. Um, here is one of my large Green Mountain topiaries. You have asked where I've gotten that in the past. Uh, these came to live here about four years ago, I think from a wonderful uh, wholesaler in Dallas. And I went down there and saw them and I, I love them, there's three of them. Uh, these guys, they don't fly right. They're not standing up like good little soldiers and I need to reposition them to do that. But the root ball is extremely heavy, even, um, even in that faux Italian clay pot. So, the reason that I call it the fish pond is because this area was inspired with, if you can see the rick a brick around it on end, there's one that needs to be put back in place. My son went to the University of Virginia and I spent, I don't know how many wonderful visits at Monticello and there is an area in the back um, of Monticello that Jefferson called the fish pond and it is he raised fish there for his table and it's circumscribed in this kind of staggered brick and I wanted to do my own little TJ Thomas Jefferson homage when I came back and you guys know I have lots of brick in my garden and I'd like to use it in deep different and novel ways and so this area could kind of be, it's a small area, but it could be then defined and circumscribed with this pretty staggered brick. Mostly what grows in here, this is what I call the minor bulb garden also because in the spring, and you can see some of the remnants there. This is where all sorts of fun bulbs come up. Uh, miniature daffodils, hyacinths, large hyacinths, um, just an assortment of small bulbs, all in yellow and blue. And then things just self-seed in here. So most of the columbine has already bloomed, but there's lots of purple columbine in here. And now there's some um, kind, lots of rain toppled over larkspur. All of these things go to gravel or go to seed very easily in the gravel. You can see some seed heads there of the columbine. And then there are also some daisies in there. It just looks very casual. I really don't groom it very much. I just kind of like the way it looks. It lends some softness to this area, I think. And this goes, there's a secondary gate. You can see my, uh, just a tiny glimpse of my trash cans through that gate. So let me talk a little bit about this fence. Um, and you can see that I have some restorative work to do on it as well. Um, this fence has been here for I don't know how long. And over the years, it began to rot out. Um, the top of it became abraded, not unlike the top of that gate, which actually I find kind of charming. So I, I also wanted to make it feel more open, get a little bit more air circulation, and just have a more interesting feel than just a plain old fence. 
So what we did was we, we took off and scored across the top of the fence horizontally, and then we topped it with some horizontal wood, we capped it, then we put a strip of lattice on top and then we capped that. And usually there's a finial there that's been knocked off, I need to replace it. And I, I did this, you guys, for a number of different reasons. I think it looks especially pretty back there where the Japanese maple is. There's the finials. Because it just provides some airiness, some texture, and some visual interest, even when there's not a lot in bloom. But I also like it because it echoes the openings in my wrought iron furniture. So that element is a repeated element that I think makes it cohesive and all speak the same language. And I just think it's very interesting. And then a number of years ago, we also did some mill work on the gates so that they would have interesting tops. So it looks just a little bit more country. And, and, and these are, or I, say, I should say English countryside. These are all relatively inexpensive things. We, we just used the same material and we reinvented it. And then I stained it this bronzy brown, which is the color of the trim on my house. I think it sometimes comes across as black. It sometimes comes across as a dark blue. You can see the shutters there are the same color. And if you want to know what this exact shade is, if you follow me on Instagram, go to the Instagram stories and under garden, under the highlights garden section, you'll see the top of the can with the exact formula on it. Now you can see that some of the bulbs, the foliage has died back, which is necessary for them to come back next year. And pretty soon I'll be able to just slough that off. You'll see I've got a couple of bulbs there that were in pots I'm gonna plant in this area. This is where lots of the bulbs that I buy forced ultimately get, get planted. There's some hyacinth bulbs over there. This is, this is a shade lever. It would, it's called Little Henry Sweet Spire, and it would no doubt like more sun than it's getting. But I like its fluffiness, and it puts out some small white blooms that are starting to fade. And it's, I, I think of this as just kind of my, my little bit of countryside because it just looks kind of meadowy or something to me. Very organic. And, I, and it's also a nice respite because I, there's not a lot of, of attention it needs. It's not terrifically clipped in here. It just kind of goes to seed and I let it do its thing. There's lots of columbine in there. All of this columbine, by the way, is purplish blue. And it came from some seed that I, uh, let's say I borrowed from a Munich beer garden years ago. And then this area is defined on the back side by the back of my little fireplace. We had jumped on the chimney at a bandwagon years ago, like so many of us here in the Southwest, but the chimney has kept getting cracked and broken and they just, the style of it did not match the style of my house, which bothered me. So I had that one built. And then this, area over here you've seen before. That blue behind the gate or the lattice work is one of my husband's boats. <laughs> we don't have much storage around here. I think of this and this this area I really need to do some trimming on these guys. This is what I call my boxwood theater. And these are just my potted boxwoods uh, that are some of them are in a loose topiary shape, but these are all ones that I've just created over time. A lot of them are, are baby gems from um, Southern Living. That one has a damaged branch I need to cut out, and a lot of these need a little more quaffing. There's also some starts in here, and I have a treat for you guys. I'm going to be doing a video on how to start some 
uh, cuttings for topiary. There's some boxwood cuttings that have been started. Sometimes when I trim my boxwood and there's a large good piece, I just stick it into the ground, especially if it's during rainy weather like now, and it takes root, and then I go back and I dig it up later. This plant stand is from Gardener Supply. I can't remember exactly the name of it. I think it's a Dexter plant stand. At any rate, it started out blue and I painted it black. And then of course I've got gravel back here and then stepping stones that lead from the grass and the lawn. Everything is connected to everything else. It's what I call my theory of relativity. Every one thing in the garden is relative to everything else. So the stepping stones and the brick, a lot of these bricks, by the way, were my mom's. She collected brick with writing on them. And so after she died, I brought some of them home and, and incorporated them into my garden, but you can see how it connects to the backyard. And then this is something we alternately call my husband's office. We call it my studio. It's used for a variety of different purposes. And this is Boston Ivy that is growing on it when it turns that autumnal palette in the fall. It's really beautiful. Right now you can see it's very overgrown and I need to clip it away from the windows. And also I have allowed it to grow up some of the trunks of the red bud, but probably too vigorously, so I will cut back some of that. The nice thing about it is it's pretty easy to tame. It comes up very easily. Um, it puts out suckers to climb. It is not, sometimes it's confusing and confused between it and Virginia creeper, but this is Boston Ivy and it's not quite so vigorous. I planted this years ago. But it's a great way to get an ivy covered look that doesn't do a lot of damage and very much a cottagey feel. Cottagey feel. I even let it grow over. This is another trick I've shared before. I let it grow over the base of the stairs and across. There's more of the brick and stone that goes up into my husband's office. And then there's one of my signature touch baskets that hangs there. I had a different one there. Um, these are baskets that I get inexpensively from Goodwill, from all different places. You've asked me if I treat them. Sometimes I do, but sometimes I don't because I, they're n I spent very little on them and I kind of like the way they look when they start to naturally weather and fall apart a little bit. So the one I had here before, which was also a handled basket, it was there, I think, for three or four years before it finally bit the dust and was relegated to the compost pile, and then I just put another one up. So now you can see the fish pond area, as strange a name as that may be, and how it relates to the rest of the deck and some other projects I've got going there. So that's one way you can introduce some sentimentality. And again, that definition and, and what you consider to be garden rooms into a very small garden. Mine is not large. The other reason I like it is this concept of garden rooms and garden spaces helps me determine how I'm going to work in the garden. So I, I can tell myself, oh, today, if I, particularly if I'm feeling overwhelmed, I can tell myself, oh, today I'm just going to do nothing but work in the fish pond area. And then I'll move on to the next spot. So there is your garden tour for today. Hopefully I answered most of your questions as I went along. I know I'm not always as good as responding to your comments. There's just a lot to respond to, and I'm gonna start doing some of those FAQ question and answer sessions in separate videos. So there you guys go. Have a wonderful Sunday. Be safe and be well.